when did the business become profitable? My favorite part. <laughs> My name is Barrister Chama Ikoku. I'm a lawyer of the Supreme Court of Nigeria and an entrepreneur. I'm also the CEO of Good Hair Limited and Brass and Copper Lifestyle Limited. The business has always been profitable, you know, the, the profit margins on hair, it's quite reasonable, you know, it's not as exorbitant as people think, especially when you provide good quality hair, because good quality hair doesn't actually come cheap, you pay for what you get, so if you're buying very good hair, you will pay a pretty penny, so, I mean, but it's still, it's still quite profitable, it's always been right from the start till tomorrow. Hair and fashion have always been a way of life for my partner Kika and I. So from university days, we would always look good, our hair would always look amazing. We weren't scared to experiment with different colours, different hairstyles, just anything that made us look good, basically. My partner Kika and I are very much into how we look, so we take pride in our appearance, our hair, our fashion, the way we look in general. So people would always ask us, oh, your hair's really amazing, where did you get it from? Or oh, how did you curl your hair this way? And we were never scared to experiment with colour and different hairstyles. So it only sort of made sense to make our passion and lifestyle into a business. Kika was very big on lace wigs at the time and I was very big on like actual hair extensions. So it was literally like a match made in heaven. So one day, you know, I ordered a couple of hair extensions, you know, and I, t I mentioned to Kika, I was like, oh yeah, by the way, what do you think? Do you reckon we can sell this? And she was like, yeah, let's go for it. And literally in that week, we sold every single thing and we were like, oh no, this, this, this is destined to be. And literally that's how the business started. Our parents were very substantial at the start of our business. We were both students in the University of Birmingham, so we didn't necessarily have an income other than our pocket money. So when we decided that we wanted to start the business, we both reached out to our parents and they were very instrumental. They literally gave us £600 each and that was our first initial capital. I must say that social media was actually quite instrumental to making Good Hair a global brand. Facebook in particular, in our first year we reached 135,000 followers and on Instagram we currently have just under 60,000 followers. That allowed us to reach women all over the world, so including different parts of Africa, the Caribbean, America, all over Europe. We were able to reach women and they were able to identify with us because we were accessible and we were personable. They would see pictures of hair, they would see pictures of us and they could relate to us. Another aspect that I believe was very instrumental to our global acceptance is the fact that we actually travel to all the different countries of origin to purchase the hair. We don't just depend on you know, online suppliers or you know, hair from Alibaba, we don't do that. We actually travel to all the various countries to purchase hair. We have very good relationships with all our suppliers and literally even their kids. <laughs> so I think the fact that people could see you know, these girls are really passionate, they actually travel to the country, it sort of allowed them to trust us a little bit more. They, you know, they believed in the brand, they loved our passion and obviously they could be rest assured that we were actually providing virgin human hair. You know, so you get what you pay for basically. What needs are we going to be addressing in the next five years? Well, my partner and I were very, very ambitious. We like to set very huge targets and, you know, try our best to live up to them. So in the next five years, we would like to expand our branches, so possibly open branches in New York, Paris, and another branch in the UK, and possibly something else in Nigeria, maybe Abuja, Qatar Courts. And we want to go into real estate, so hopefully we'll own the properties that we're actually opening. Hmm, other businesses. Well, as, as aspiring business moguls, yes, we do want to enter other businesses, other markets. We're considering real estate. Right now, we've got long leases, but we would like to own our new franchises. So, yeah, we want to buy and sell property. Also, we've just recently launched a restaurant and bar. It's called Brass and Copper Lifestyle. We partnered with the brains behind Cocoon and we've opened an amazing restaurant and bar on the terrace of the Good Hair Space called Brass and Copper. Make sure you check it out.